What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic, and after getting so many questions after the Wi-Fi 7 video I did last month, I thought it might be helpful for me to clear some things up since it could be a little confusing for people who might just be looking to improve their Wi-Fi. Believe it or not, you don't need the most expensive system and you definitely don't need Wi-Fi 7. So what I wanna do today is talk about the different types of wireless routers out there and help you figure out which one is best for you. So I usually break wireless routers into five different groups. You have your ISP provided Wi-Fi, which is usually referred to as a gateway. Then you have basic wireless routers, which are relatively inexpensive. Gaming routers, which are usually a bit more expensive with more features. Whole home routers, which come with multiple units that you spread out around your house. And then there's professional or commercial grade routers for professionals or tech nerds who want the ultimate control over their network. Now, most people are probably using the Wi-Fi that's built into their gateway or modem that was provided by their ISP or internet service provider. Now, even though some ISPs offer units that provide pretty decent Wi-Fi, if you're having issues, it can mean that it can't handle the number of devices you have, maybe it's placed in a bad spot so the signals have trouble reaching your devices, or the layout of your house could be causing some issues. Whatever the case may be, upgrading your router could possibly fix some of those problems. So now that we got that part out of the way, let's talk about the other four different types of routers. And first I'll start with basic routers. So if you go on Amazon right now and type in wireless router, most of the results that you're gonna see are gonna be what I call basic routers. They usually range in price from around 30 to 70 bucks and they work okay for apartments or small houses, but depending on the layout of your home and the number of wireless devices, devices you have, you might need something more powerful. And seriously, if the Wi-Fi that was provided to you by your ISP isn't that old and you're having issues with it, then you're probably going to continue having issues with a $30 router. So I suggest spending a bit more if you're having problems. That doesn't mean that you have to go out and spend several hundred dollars. It just means that you might want to go with something a bit more scalable and more powerful. So for most people, I don't really recommend buying a router from the basic category. And I usually recommend a router that allows you to easily up upgraded into a whole home system. And this brings us to our next category I wanna talk about, which is mesh routers. Mesh routers, also known as whole home Wi-Fi, comes with a main router and one or two additional mesh access points. This allows you to spread them out around your house to improve your coverage. Not only are these systems priced pretty fairly, but they're also really easy to use. They're usually more aesthetically pleasing and you can easily buy additional units if you need more coverage so they can fit pretty much any space, including large homes. And right now, you you have a ton of options for mesh routers. They can range in price all the way from 40 bucks for a single unit when they're on sale, all the way to over $700 if you want the latest and greatest. And as you'd expect, you tend to get more features, better coverage and support for more wireless devices with the more you spend on these systems. But depending on your home and the type of devices you have, at some point you end up with diminished returns. So it's not always necessary to jump for the most expensive option. Now these mesh systems might seem like a no brainer, but there are are some downsides to whole home or mesh Wi-Fi. The first issue is that adding additional units can actually have a negative impact on your Wi-Fi speeds compared to a single router. All right, so for example, let's say you have a 2000 square foot home with three levels and you buy a three pack mesh system and you put a unit on each floor. This seems like a great idea at first, but the thing to keep in mind is that unless your units are physically wired together, you're basically cutting your speed in half with each additional mesh access point that you add to the system. You should consider that you're always gonna get the fastest speeds from the main router or the one that's wired directly to the internet. Most of your wireless devices like phones, laptops, or game consoles are likely gonna connect to the access point that has the strongest signal, regardless of whether it's the fastest option. This is why I recommend installing just one one unit first, then run speed tests around your house to see which areas are having trouble, and then you can put the mesh access points in those locations. This ensures that you're getting the fastest speeds possible and that you're only connecting to one of the mesh units when you absolutely have to. And before I get into the next category, I wanna take a quick moment to talk about today's video sponsor. So with all the things that's going on in the world these last few years, mental health has never been more important. And many of us ignore mental health and go through life not getting the help we need. Well, that's where today's video sponsor comes in. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy platform and their mission is to make professional therapy more accessible, more affordable, and convenient. They provide easy access to a wide variety of licensed therapists and psychologists who can handle everything from marriage counseling to family therapy and even child therapy so your entire family can get the help they need. 
And being 100% online, it's easy to talk to a licensed therapist, even if you have a busy schedule. Once you sign up, they'll match you up with an available therapist who is best qualified to help with your specific needs. And you can communicate with them via video conference, messages, live chat, or over the phone right from their mobile app, making it the most convenient way to talk to someone who can help. So to get started with BetterHelp today, go to betterhelp.com slash chrismajestic, or you can use the links in the video description. I wanna thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this portion of today's video, and let's jump into our next category. All right, so moving on to our next category, which is gaming routers. Now, even though mesh routers probably work just fine for most gamers, hardcore gamers or tech savvy users might want a bit more control or advanced features. And this is where gaming routers come in. And nowadays gaming routers actually allow you to mesh them together like the mesh systems that we were talking about earlier. Now gaming routers do cost a bit more, but they allow more customization. These features might include things like QoS, which allows you to prioritize traffic on certain devices, which is great for gaming, you might get more dedicated wireless bands so you can assign certain signals to certain devices, or you might see more cutting edge wireless standards on gaming routers like Wi-Fi 7 or 6E and better processors to handle a larger number of wireless devices. Overall, gaming routers can give you great performance if you're looking for the most powerful system with the most options and features. Now, traditionally, gaming routers used to be considered the highest end router from most manufacturers, but honestly, they've been kind of dying out lately since most companies have been more focused on high-end mesh systems. Now, personally, I still think traditional gaming routers have their place since they're usually more customizable and often have more advanced options compared to mesh systems. Now, if they start adding more advanced features to the mesh routers, then I think the old traditional gaming routers with all those external antennas will be a thing of the past. And the last category I wanna talk about is professional or commercial grade network equipment. Now, unlike consumer grade equipment, pro equipment usually have dedicated devices for a specific job. So consumer grade routers usually includes a router, a network switch, and a wireless access point all in one single device. Professional systems split up these jobs so you usually have three devices to do that same job. So you'll often have a dedicated router, a separate network switch, and wireless access points that you use for your wireless devices. So aside from being infinitely customizable, commercial grade Wi-Fi is usually very powerful and can handle significantly more devices since they're meant to be used in businesses where lots of people might be connecting to them. The downside is that you don't usually see bleeding edge technology like you see in consumer grade equipment since the ultimate goal is reliability and consistency. But if you're looking for the ultimate level of control, prosumer or commercial grade equipment is unmatched. All right, so now that we've talked about all the different options, how do you choose a router if you're looking to upgrade? Well, as always, the biggest deciding factor is budget. Obviously, a $30 router isn't gonna perform as well as a $130 one, but what I suggest to most people is to buy a single mesh router and see how it performs in your home. If you find that you still need coverage or you have some dead zones, then you can buy an additional add-on unit and put it close to where you're having issues and see if it fixes it. And if you have another dead zone on the other side of your house, you can add a third one. Mesh systems have taken over the market so much that you can now get a single mesh router for as low as 40 bucks, which is making it a no-brainer at this point. But the biggest factor to consider is the Wi-Fi version of the system, which will usually be Wi-Fi 5, 6, 6E, or Wi-Fi 7, with each version being faster than the other. Right now, I think the sweet spot is Wi-Fi 6 or 6E if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, since you can usually get a pretty good deal on them. And if you're tech savvy or an avid gamer and you're finding that you're not seeing the features you want on those mesh systems, you can upgrade to a gaming router. All right, so what about Wi-Fi 7 or even 6E? Well, even though those newer wireless standards are crazy, fast and impressive, most wireless devices can't really take advantage of these speeds. Now, to be fair, there are still ways to benefit from those newer wireless standards, especially if you're using a mesh system, but the high cost of the latest and greatest system makes them difficult to recommend to most people. All right, so now you have in mind what kind of router you want. Well, now it's time to connect it, and I think it's really important for you to understand how to do that. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail in this video, but the main thing to consider if you're not replacing your existing internet gateway or modem is that you should put it in bridge mode before you connect to your new router. If you don't put your gateway or modem in bridge mode, you'll be sending all of your internet traffic through two firewalls, which can cause all kinds of issues for your network. And if you're not sure how to enable bridge mode, most ISPs 
companies are actually willing to walk you through the process and most of the time you can be up and running within 15 minutes. And an alternative, if you don't wanna mess with your existing gateway and put it in bridge mode, you do have the option of putting your new router in access point mode. This basically changes it from a full-blown router to a basic access point for Wi-Fi. And this will ensure that your new router doesn't interfere with your current setup, but the downside is that it disables most of the cool features on the new router. So if you want all those cool new features, then I suggest sticking with the first option. So at the end of the day, the thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to spend a bunch of money to upgrade your Wi-Fi and you don't need the latest and greatest to see an improvement. Adding a nice scalable system to your home can be highly effective without breaking the bank. And again, if you're interested in buying a new router and you're looking for some options, I will put some options in the video description. So make sure you take a look at those links. And if you found this video helpful, as always, be sure to make sure you mash that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.